So you're looking to improve your backside. What do you need? We have the answer at FusionFirearms.com. Today we're going to go over, I call it the backside of the 1911. What do I mean by that? It's all the components in your slide, okay, on the, on the backside, all right? We, we, you're going to be doing an upgrade to your gun. You're looking at new extractors, new firing pins, new ejectors, new stop plates, uh, 80 series, 70 series. What do you do? What do you do? Okay. Well, we're going to go over that today um and you know give you the differences and things to look at um as you're choosing these parts and and going through these items so all right so what what encompasses the back back side of the gun all right well the back side of the of the upper um what i consider is okay your firing pin your firing pin spring your extractor and your stop plate all right then also it's going to be working in uh, with your ejector, okay? So what do you do about an ejector that's gonna be on the frame? Again, important part of the backside. So again, we're gonna go over these parts, the differences and, and what, what, what do you wanna choose? You know, what, maybe, maybe this will help you understand what you need uh, because again, we get questions every day uh, people calling in, they don't know if they have 70 series, 80 series, they have to change components, what firing pin diameter, no clue, okay? So we're, we'll start out real, real quick with the actual sizes, okay? And I mean lengths of, of, of pistols. And I don't care if you have a, a wide body or if you have a single stack, I don't care if you have a defender, an officer's, commander, a five inch, a six inch, a seven inch, it doesn't matter, okay? Most of the components on the back side of the gun, other than for caliber choices, are all the same. They're all the same length, okay? Now you will find some bastardized brands out there. And what do I mean by that? Okay, there is some import type products coming in that the extractor is not a 1911. It might look like a 1911, the pistol. It is not a 1911, okay? So you'll get a lot of people that think, oh my, I got the deal of the century here. It's this XYZ brand 1911. Well, you got the deal of the century because there's a reason for that. You will never be able to fix it, okay? Um, and before you buy that deal, what I usually suggest people do is call customer support at the factory that's selling that product. Generally, from what we found, you can't even get anybody to pick up the telephone or if you do, they have no clue what you have or what you bought or even how to fix it. So, um, again, I like to stay within the box of, you know, buy a quality 1911, buy something that is, you know, a, a good base series. I'm, 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 I, my preference is 70 series. Um, most of the builders, 70 series is their preference. Some people will want the 80 series, but it's a real finite amount of people. Most of the people who are buying 80 series pistols are people that really don't understand the difference, really don't understand what's going on there. Uh, and they just want a gun, so they just buy it. Um, so anyway, let's get into the parts. So we'll start out with uh, our extractors, okay? So um, again, with extractors, what do you have to know? Well, you know, basically uh, you have 70 and 80 series style extractors. The 70 series will be, you know, the barrel will not have the clearance hole here for the plunger, okay, which is the plunger for the firing pin stop, all right? Now the 80 series will have a hook milled into it, all right? And that is for to encompass the uh, plunger for the firing pin stop block, all right? Um, Again, many people are be, it will be, well, and we will go into doing a, uh, a video just on 70 and 80 series, but a lot of people say, well, Bob, 70 80 series, I, I've been told it's better for me. Well, no, it's not, okay? Um, um, basically, a, again, it's personal preference. Do you want a firing pin stop block? Okay, what does the firing pin stop block do? Uh, again, we'll get into this in another video, but you know, people say, well, drop test and all sorts of stuff. I've never seen a 1911 go off ever in my life from dropping it, okay? I've done testing with, uh, you know, ULL laboratories, all these other places. You may, if you slam it <laughs> from 10 feet up, see a little dimple in a primer or something, still gun has never gone off, all right? And I have seen 80 series parts fail, 
all right? I've seen the little finger that comes up break right off, so you can't shoot the gun. I've had police officers bring their guns in here where the actual plunger is stuck full of junk, and again, the gun will not go bang. Well, if I'm a police officer, I want my gun to go bang, okay? Um, so again, there are sort of things that, um, uh, you know, again, most target builders, people are buying, building target pistols and, and, and guys who really know the platform generally want 70 series and don't want 80 series. But again, we'll get into that later down the road. So again, back to the extractor, what do you gotta know? Um, again, 70 or 80 series, okay? If you have the 80 series parts in your gun, um, you're gonna need an 80 series extractor, okay? The other thing is gonna be caliber, all right? You've got, you've got basically two sides of the caliber bracket to look at for most of the components in a 1911, all right? You have a, a nine millimeter and 40 caliber breech face, and you have a 45 ACP breech face. Now, that doesn't mean they're all the same, okay? There are three distinctive different breech faces, okay? But uh, the 40 caliber generally shares the components of the nine millimeter. And what do I mean by that? It means if you have a nine millimeter or 38 super or 380 auto, you will have the same extractor <clears throat> as a 40 S and W or a 10 millimeter or 357 SIG or on and on and on, 40 super, okay? And in the 45 ACP, group, you'll have a 45 ACP extractor, uh, okay, which will be like the 45 ACP, 45 Super, 460 Roll, and things like that, okay? So again, just, just think of that. What do you have? And again, if you need help, give us a call at the Fusion Tech Line. We'll help you out. So, you know, again, extractors, you know, and again, extractors generally will not fall from the sky, go into your gun and just work, okay? That's not the way they're designed. Generally, you're gonna tune the extractor, which again, in future videos, we'll get into how to tune them, all right? You're gonna actually, you bend the extractor slightly to get the tension that you want. Um, you're also going to generally, I always do a polishing here, polishing on the breech face, check the lead angles, things like that on the extractors themselves. So, um, you know, extractors, you wanna make sure you set it up right, okay? And 90% and of the guns we get in here, uh, that we're rebuilding Colts and Springfields and Kimbers and else the extractors are generally not set up right, okay? Because you're at a factory situation that if it goes bang seven times or three times, wherever their test cr criteria is, they're, they're happy with it and off it ships. But, you know, a gun that's gonna be real reliable, you know, big part of a reliability job is the extractor. So again, it's something that you wanna focus on and, you know, make sure you're setting it up right in your, in your pistol. So then what, you, what, what do we have? Firing pins, we're gonna move on to firing pins next. Um, again, real simple. Um, you know, what about a firing pin spring? Well, basically a firing pin spring is a firing pin spring is a firing pin spring. As long as you buy good quality springs, uh, I like the extra power springs. Um, and we also at Fusion here have the stainless steel uh, firing pin springs, okay? At a 17.7 aircraft quality stainless, all right? Um, so, uh, what's with a spring? The spring will also be turned a little bit tighter on one end uh, so that it'll actually stick on the barrel of the firing pin when you're assembling it, okay? And in that way, as you pull the firing pin out of the uh, pocket and the slide, the spring will come right out with it. It's not bouncing all over the place. Now, some springs you will find, they don't have a closed end or an end that's tighter. Uh, so, you just gotta watch that when you're, when you're disassembling it. But generally, just use good quality springs. Uh, it'll, it'll pay for itself uh, many times over. Now, on the firing pins itself, again, you're gonna look at 70 and 80 series. If you have a 70 series pistol, all right, which doesn't have a firing pin stop block, it does not matter what firing pin you use for the most part, okay? You'll see there's all these different designs to the back barrel of a firing pin, all right? And generally, what you'll find is that's a solid version it's more of an old school solid version. And that you cannot use with an 80 series, all right? There is not the clearance cut in the back here for the firing pin uh, stop block, all right? The plunger that goes up. The rest of them that I have in my hand here, you'll see either a radial cut or you'll see a, a, a bigger flat cut going through a smaller diameter. And this is all for that plunger pin, all right? Clearance. Um, so if you have an 80 series, you gotta make sure you have one with the clearance for your plunger. All right, that's just the way you need it. Um, 
The other thing to look at with firing pins is again, do you want stainless or carbon? Most time that's personal preference. Um, what preference do I have? I really don't have one on that. I mean, both pins perform the same, it seems, as stainless and carbon. I haven't had any more failures in one than the other over the years. It just, you know, it's gonna personal preference and what you like and what you want in your build. The, um, the other big thing you gotta look at, okay, is the tip diameters. Now, there's generally just two tip diameters. Again, it's gonna be that nine millimeter 40 caliber uh, uh, breech face uh, group, or it's gonna be the 45 ACP breech face group, okay? And um, again, they do have a little crossover. All right, so the 45, the traditional 45 ACP pin um, will be about 90 thousandths in diameter here, okay? And is, is it's very easy if you're looking at them side by side, one's fatter, one's thinner, okay? It's just, it's easy to see. But the nine millimeter will be around 70 thousandths in diameter, okay? Um, now, the other thing to look at, most custom grade or high quality slides or pistols will only use nine millimeter firing pins, all right? And th this is gonna be across the board. I don't care if you buy a Wilson, an Ed Brown, a Fusion, uh, any of the high-end stuff, all right? Most all slides, regardless of caliber, all right, and breech face will have the smaller pin, all right? The 70 thousandths pin approximately. On, on most of the uh, more traditional 1911s, um, or your standard 1911s that are out there, you'll have a 45 ACP pin. Um, and again, it's just a bigger diameter. No difference in length, no difference in any type of other performance, but the, the, the diameter is different, okay? So we'll get, we'll be, we sell slides every day and we'll get people calling here, well, I can't, I got a 45 slide, I can't get my fire 45 pin in there. No, nope, because you need a nine millimeter pin. Why did you do that? Okay, and we'll go over that in another, another, uh, um video okay but there's a lot of mechanical advantages to using the nine millimeter pin all right so that's why we most custom builders will use um the nine millimeter diameter pin across the board regardless of caliber or breech face that you're working on okay so that's that's pretty much everything you need to know on firing pins themselves so it's it's uh again pretty basic you got questions give us a holler send us an email all right, so now we'll go to stop plates. So stop plates, there's a lot of choices in stop plates. Okay, they're, 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 again, you have 80 series and 70 series stop plates. What's the difference? Not much. Uh, most people will take a 70 series and just convert it to an 80 when they need it. And basically a 70 series stop plate and an 80 series stop plate are the same, okay? Other than this little tiny notch that's here. And that's just clearance for the actual uh, 80 series plunger finger that comes up and actuates the plunger uh, for your firing pin stop plate. Um, that, again, uh, <laughs> when we'll go over that in 70 and 80 series, I usually take all those parts and get rid of them and put a put a filler plate in and swatch, uh, swap your 80 series back to a 70 series. But again, that'd be another video. <laughs> and the firing pin stop plates, what do you wanna look for? Okay, big thing, stainless and carbon again personal preference. I don't see really any huge advantage from one to the other. Um, it's just basically, what do you want? And then the other big thing you've got to look for um, are, are two items. One, it again, is it the nine millimeter, 10 millimeter group over here? Or is it the 45 ACP group over here? And what you'll find is on the, the nine millimeter and 10 millimeter, it's basically the same as the 45 other than the clearance cut in here for the ejector because the ejector will be slightly wider on a 9mm or a 10mm, so you'll want to have the clearance in here. Now, you can use a regular 45 and cut the clearance in yourself. I see people do that all the time. It's not anything wrong with it. You can do that. Um, the other attributes on a, on a firing pin stop plate are full profile and the cut profile on top. And again, what's the difference in these? Well, you'll see basically just one is cut, one has the full profile. Why is this cut? Generally, if you have a, a, a slide that you're changing all these parts out on and you have fixed sights, you won't use the full profile because the sight cut hasn't come down to the point where it's cut into um, you know, the, the, the pocket uh, which the stop plate uh, stays into. 
So when, if you say you go to a Bomar sight cut on your gun, which is lower, uh, low profile milled if you have one done, <laughs> most people use, will have to use the cut stop plate. Why? Because the blade of the adjustable sight will not, it will, will not go down far enough. It'll interfere with this. So again, you can still take a full profile and cut it down. Um, or we do supply them this way. And generally the, the stop plates, unless you buy a drop in, <clears throat> will need a little bit of fitting, okay? And that's generally so, you know, you wanna fit a tight stop plate so you're not clocking an extractor. And again, we'll get into that in another uh, video of reliability and feeding. Um, and there's, there's a few ways, different ways of curing clocking. But one way that a lot of people do is they'll buy an oversized stop plate, file fit it to their a, a ejector so when it's going in the slide everything is tight and everything's being held consistently in the same position okay so that's just another thing to look at for stop plates and, and that's there really isn't much more in stop plates that i can tell you um the 80 series stop plate again will have that little extra notch and guys you can use a 70 series and just file it in or, or cut it in it's not a not a problem okay we'll move on to ejectors uh, there's a bunch of different ejectors, and again, they go with <clears throat> the actual caliber group again, which you'll have again the 9mm and 40 caliber breech face group over here, okay? And you'll have the 45 breech face group over here. And you look at the ejectors, what's the difference? Well, you'll, you'll notice that the width, the thickness of the 9mm and 40 caliber is a little bit wider. And on a 45 ACP, it's a standard, it's thinner. Now, you will find on some manufacturers, okay, that they will be using a nine millimeter in a 45 in their commander and defender and officer sizes. Mm, I don't really totally understand why anybody did that. You can do it, it's not a problem. Um, pluses and minuses, I don't really see any. Um, so again, but some manufacturers, if you have an officer's or a defender model and some commanders will use a nine millimeter uh, ejector across the board. So that's just one thing to look at. Um, the other thing is the nose, the nose, okay? You have standard military, which would be ground right back, which would get very few people that even want those. Most people want an extended or an extra extended, okay? And what's the difference? It's just the tip, it's the length of the tip. And a lot of people uh, want the extended or the extra extended. Uh, the extra extended, generally you will never use them the way that is. You'll grind this back to where you like it. But a lot of people like to see um, that extra material because they like to do the fitting themselves. They like to actually go and grind it back, change the angle slightly, uh, go out and test fire, see if it's ejecting the way they like it. If not, they come back and they play with that angle a little bit more. And the, the extended, the extra extended does give you a little bit more, uh, you know, a little bit more material so you can play with that a little bit more. Also, <clears throat> on the smaller cartridges such as 9mm and 380 Auto, it will hit quicker so it'll get your brass out a little faster. Um, so a lot of people like that also. But again, there's not much difference. Um, and performance wise, again, it's personal preference and, and you know, how you want to set the pistol up. Um, also, the legs, <clears throat> I personally like them without being drilled. We have them a couple of ways. We only have the drilled uh, legs in the 45 ACP, um, which is more of a standard drop in part. I, I like to drill the legs myself, which what I'll do is, you know, the, on most of my builds, we'll actually uh, clamp this in place use the hole in the frame to drill, and then insert the pin um, to retain it. Now we'll also, <clears throat> retaining the ejectors, will give you a pin. You'll have a pin in your ejector when you get it from Fusion also, so you have a new pin. Um, now, does that, do all companies pin the ejectors? No, okay? There are certain companies out there right now that are gluing in the ejectors. Now, uh, the epoxies and, and some of the polymers I see some advantages at times, uh, depending on the, the, the component within the pistol, but for an ejector, it is a total pain in the ass for people, okay? So instead of you just 
punching out the pin and then replacing the ejector or redrawing another one and, and replacing it. You've basically got to break the whole entire gun down if it's if it's epoxyed in. You've got to torch the frame. And I have had, um, you know, basically there's some of the bigger companies that do that, Springfield Armory, and I have had frames that you torch the death out of them and you're still trying to get them out because the, the epoxy is holding in still. Um, Many people, when they have us do custom work on their uh, Springfields that are epoxied in, the first thing they want us to do is get rid of the ejector, drill it out or, or burn it out, and then and then go ahead and, and put a new ejector in and drill and pin the frame. Um, it's a lot of extra work uh, and cost, which shouldn't be there because that should have been done at the factory. But again, through trying to uh, cheapen the manufacturing costs. Some companies are going and using, you know, some of these products to, to, to do that. And when it goes down to the consumer and you want to change that frame from a 45 to a nine millimeter or a 10 millimeter, we get that all the time where people will come in and say, oh, I've got this Springfield and it's a 45 ACP and I want a new nine millimeter top end put on it. Oh, well, the top end is easy to fit and we can get that set up pretty good. But then when we go to the ejector, it is a huge pain, okay, because we have to, instead of just pulling a pin and putting a new ejector in for the person, you've got to torch the frame and everything else. So, um, you know, I'm not real thrilled of using epoxies or, or those type of things for ejectors. Now, <clears throat> if you have a loose ejector and you need a, you know, a couple drops of Loctite on there to stiffen it up, that's fine, okay? Uh, I'm, not, I'm not really ob objected to that because um, it's easy to work with Loctite components, but some of these other epoxies that are being used, um, you know, they're basically being, it's like a one-time use. They don't ever really consider ever anybody in the, in the future is going to be really uh, customizing or working on that gun and, you know, it is what it is. Uh, so then when you go to, go to do the upgrades, it is a lot of work, a lot of extra work. Um, you know, for savings that are, you know, it's a dollar thirty-two savings at the factory, and it ends up costing you ninety-eight dollars on the other end because you know that's the way it was done. Um, but again, that's that's pretty much it in a in a nutshell for these parts and components. <coughs> Excuse me. You'll see on the slides if you uh, want to understand what you have for seventy or eighty series, and we'll give you some close-ups of this. Uh, you'll see the plunger in the 80 series on the underneath of the slide with the firing pin stop. On the 70 series slide, you'll see there is no, no plunger, no hole, no extra hole. <coughs> and on the frame, you'll see this little finger, which again, will give you close-ups of that. And this little finger is what comes up and actuates that plunger. And we'll go over to 70 and 80 series here uh, shortly with a little bit more detail so everyone can see that. Okay guys, that's about it right now. We'll give you some more detailed pictures within the video. Uh, thank you for watching. If you got any questions, uh, you know, look, just leave it below in the comments. We'll take a look at it. Um, we're doing an awful lot of videos and we really appreciate all the support and a great year for growth for us at Fusion here. Thank you.